Last week, we started by me asking you this question. If, if you could only listen to one artist, one musical group for the rest of time, or only one CD, one album from here on out, which album would you pick? Uh, let me ask you another question. What is your favorite smell? It's a weird question, maybe, you know, but think like what's something that you smell when you're like, oh, oh, that smells pretty good. Maybe for you it's like, like a campfire. There's just something about being outdoors and the smoke that yeah, it just, it just smells good. Uh, or, or maybe it's a favorite candle scent that you have. Or, or maybe you're like me and you go outside and you're like, oh, somebody's, somebody's grilling. So somebody's cooking some meat. I need to find out more about that. Have you ever been like down to Disney World or actually uh, stores in the mall do the same thing? But, but there's this whole thing where, where stores in Disney World uh, and some of the rides and attractions too, they have very distinct scents, smells uh, that, that are pleasing and pique your interest and, and they're trying to get you to go into the store to eventually buy whatever it is that they're selling or are the smells that are tied to our memories. Now what does smelling have to do with singing? Well, uh, hang with me. We're going to continue, in fact, conclude our three-week series on singing today. In week one, we tried to answer the question, why do we sing? Why do we take time on Sunday mornings or on our videos? Why do we take time to participate in music? We looked at the fact that we're created to sing, we're commanded to sing, and we should be compelled to sing. And then in week two, we tried to answer the question, well, how should we sing? Okay, we understand the why we should sing, but well, how should we sing? And we said that we should sing together, that we should sing well. In order to sing well, we need to sing prepared. And then finally, we need to sing gratefully. We conclude things today by answering this question, well, what happens when we sing? If we understand why we sing and how we should sing, when we do that, what happens when we sing? And I'm going to give you four things that happen. And this was not an exhaustive list. There was a lot more. I actually had a little trouble narrowing it down. So but let me just give you four things that I think happen when we sing. Here's the first one. We obey God by singing His praises. What happens when we sing? Well, we, we obey God by singing His praises. Uh, we've looked at several verses over the course of the last couple of weeks that have to do with singing uh, to God. Uh, let me give you some other ones that we haven't looked at yet. Psalm 105, verse 2, sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell about all His wondrous works. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 10, sing a new song to the Lord, sing His praise from the ends of the earth, you who go down to the sea with all that fills it, you coasts and inlands with your inhabitants. One more, James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Hopefully we've established for you back in week one and last week too that we're commanded to sing. Over 400 references in Scripture that talk about singing. Over 50 direct commands to sing to God. We just looked at a few of those. But picture for a moment, what's that like for God on the receiving end? What's that like for Him to, to hear our songs, to obey Him in this way, and to talk to Him through singing? You know, that's what we're doing when, we, when we're singing. We're talking directly to God. We're singing to Him. And Scripture tells us that when we, when we pray, when, when we talk to God, when God hears from us, that's like a, it's like a pleasing aroma, Scripture says. It's, it's a pleasing incense. It's a smell uh, that is good. And he hears us singing, and he smells that and says, Oh, I'd, I'd like to smell some more of that. Keep, keep bringing that to me. You know, God never gets tired of hearing from us. And he never gets tired of, of hearing from us how much we, we love him and how much we are thankful for what He's done for us. And when we sing, this is, this is one of the opportunities we have uh, to give Him thanks, to, to sing Him praises, and He never tires of hearing about it. In fact, it's the opposite. It's like a sweet incense, a sweet aroma to Him, Scripture says. And what's great about this idea, and, I, and I've talked about this the last couple of weeks, but I want to hit it again today. What's great about this idea is that our singing doesn't have to be perfect. 
It just has to be done from the heart. It has to be genuine. It's like if you, if you, if you have kids or maybe you've got grandkids or a family friend or, or something, uh, you, somebody that has, has ever drawn something for you or made you a gift. Like grandparents, can you relate to this? Where your grandkids come and, and maybe they're a little bit younger and they, they've drawn a picture or they, they've written something, they've painted something in class, and it says that you're the, you're the best grandparents ever or the best mom ever or my dad is the greatest, number one dad. I've got a couple things like that in my office. And have you ever gone over to a, a grandparent's house and maybe you saw something like this taped up onto their fridge where it's like singing the praises of the grandparents? And have you ever said to the grandparent, well, that, that's not a very good drawing. <laughs> like that, that's, that would never make its way into an art gallery. That, that line is crooked. Well, they colored out the lines just a little bit. It's not perfect. Now, would we say that to a grandparent? No, of course not. And, and if we did, what would the grandparent's response be? They'd say, I, I don't care about that. They made that for me. That's coming from their heart. And I think it's the same way when, when we sing to God. When we talk to Him, he, he doesn't care that it's, it's not perfect, that we're not hitting every right note at every right time. What He cares about is that we are, are obeying Him. We're doing what He's commanded us to do, and we're, we're singing His praises, and He loves to hear from us. And so it's a win-win situation uh, for us because uh, we're obeying God through song, but we're also deepening our relationship with Him. We're furthering that through the conversation, the talking that we're having. So the first thing that happens when we sing is that we're obeying God by singing His praises. The second thing that happens when we sing is that we become participants in worship, not just observers. Let me read that again. We, we become participants in worship, not just observers. God calls us to action. Christianity doesn't allow us just to sit still. We are to engage with it. Ephesians 5.19, a verse we looked at last week, says, Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. We are to be making music with our whole heart. We're to be engaged. We're to be fully involved, interacting with the things that are taking place. Sunday mornings are not just for observing. Sunday mornings are not just concerts. Right where we, we, just, we just observe. I'm not a huge concert guy. I've been to a few in my lifetime. Uh, most recently, back when I lived in Louisville, my daughter is a big fan of the band For King and Country. Uh, and they're a great group. It's two brothers. Uh, and so for her Christmas present, they were coming to Louisville. So she and I got a ticket, and I was able to take her and go. And it was a fun time. I really enjoyed seeing her excitement. But when you're there at the concert, like everybody paid their money to be there, and then you're just free to do whatever you want. I mean, like if you're Natalie, you're going to be standing up singing along with every song. Uh, if you're somebody else, if you're watching others, they're just sitting there. Maybe some of them were on their phones checking things, and you're kind of like, well, I guess they paid their money. They can come and observe or participate however they want to. Uh, but, but Sunday mornings aren't like that. Sunday morning's not supposed to be... Either we're participating or observing one or the other. We are to be active participants. That's, that's what we want. That's what Pastor Andy and I want on, on Sunday mornings. That, that's why we do the different things that we do. Like, like when we're preaching, like when we're doing this, we want you to be engaged. We want you to be thinking. We want you to be challenged because of the things that we're talking about. That's why we make the outlines available. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about that? Like, we're not trying just to, to print paper, for, you know, print copies of something for fun. We make the outlines available so that we're trying to make it easy and on-ramp for people to take notes and to be engaged in what it is that we're talking about. In our in-person gatherings, we have often specific prayer times where we want people to spend time praying and engaged in that process. We take communion together. There's fellowship that takes place before and after, whether at the in-person or here in the chat box through the live chat gathering. We want people to be engaged. God wants us to engage with Him. And one of the ways that we are engaged is through singing. We become participants. Our individual voices, when we sing, they become an ensemble. They, be, they become the choir. And in singing, it is perfectly demonstrated that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. 
when we join our voice, voices, we produce something far greater than if we just try to do it individually. Like if you were there on a Sunday morning and I asked the question, okay, who wants to sing a solo? Who wants to just stand up and sing? Now, you might have one or two people that would raise their hand. My youngest son, David, might raise his hand uh, to be silly. <laughs> uh, but most people are going to be like, I, I don't want to do that by myself. That's too embarrassing or awkward or uncomfortable. And then if you expanded it and said, well, let's, you know, how about we sing uh, a quartet? Uh, you might get a couple more people that do that, but still the majority of the people aren't going to want to do that. But when we have everybody stand and sing together, and sing as an ensemble, sing as a congregation, to sing as a, a whole group. It becomes something magnificent that we can't duplicate any other way. And so we have the opportunity to not just attend worship, but to experience it. That's what I mean when I say we become participants, not just people who observe. Third thing, what happens when we sing? We give and get fuel for the week. We give and we get fuel for the week. Have you ever run out of gas somewhere? <laughs> Maybe you've been driving along. Uh, my wife and I have had this happen to us once or twice. One of the two of us, it's me, one of the two of us lets the gas gauge go down a little farther than we probably should. And there was one time we were on a date. Uh, we, we were married, but we were, we were going on a date as a, as a married couple. Anyway, ran out of gas at a stoplight at a very busy intersection. It's another story for another time. But that's happened to me where I've run out of gas. Thankfully for me, there was a gas station right there on the corner. Have you ever run out of gas? And maybe you needed somebody to bring a can and just, just put a little bit in your tank till you could get to the next point. You know, we live in a, in a broken and an exhausting world. And this world is trying its best to tire us out, to defeat us, to break us down, to beat us down. And it's, it's a struggle just to, to survive to Sunday, just to get through the week. And then you come on Sunday and Pastor Andy or I bring some sort of message. And what we spend our time on Sunday talking about often is, is other things that we should be doing through the week. Like Pastor Andy just got done doing this series on grace bombs. Or we've done series on living on mission and living with a deployed mindset, uh, being intentional with the people around us. I did a series last year on the one another's. What are things we should do? You know, pray for one another, encourage one another, things like that. It's like, I'm, I'm just trying to get through to Sunday, and I'm exhausted, and I'm tired, and I'm discouraged, and I'm just trying to get there so that I can just get a little bit of fuel in my tank. That's one of the things that happens through song. We encourage one another. By me being there and participating, I'm encouraged to look around and to see other people singing of the same mind that I am. And by the same standard, they're encouraged by watching me sing, by watching me engaged and communicating with our Savior. And not only are we encouraging one another, but we're teaching and reminding each other of biblical truths. Uh, those things that we can hang on to during the week, because I would venture to say you will far more uh, easily remember the chorus of that one particular song that just sticks in your mind. You'll remember that far easier, and that'll come to mind much quicker uh, than you'll ever remember the main points of the sermon. Uh, like week one, you know, what were the main points? Now, I've already referenced them, so maybe they're in your mind, but you probably had forgotten them, and that's okay. No fault there. Sometimes I forget till I get my notes out again and look at it. But I said we were created, commanded, and compelled. You probably forgot that far sooner than you would remember a chorus or a song that comes to mind on that Wednesday or Thursday of the week when you're just tired and worn out and you just need a little bit of encouragement. How about this biblical truth that we find in this song? Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy, that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. And should this life bring suffering, Lord, I will remember 
what Calvary has bought for me, both now and forever. God, you're so good. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. You're so good to me. And, and so as that week is going along, and you're looking at the world around you and just looking outside your windows scares you. This chorus comes to mind that God is good. He is good to me because of the cross of Calvary. And when we're singing this together at our gatherings, when we're, when we're singing this in unison and in one voice, it solidifies the unity that we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we're looking around, seeing other people and saying, they're singing the same thing that I am, and I'm encouraged by them singing, and that's putting a little fuel in my tank, and then by me singing, that's putting a little fuel in theirs and allows us to keep going and keep going until we get to the next Sunday and we can get refilled through song again. Last one. The last thing that happens when we sing is it allows us to refocus our minds. We refocus our minds. Let me expand on this a little bit. Let me read Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. It's a passage that doesn't directly relate to singing, but I think it's applicable. Verse 1, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance, and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before Him, He endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider Him who endured such hostility from sinners against Himself, so that you won't grow weary and give up. We go where we look. Where our focus is, that's where we go. They teach this to you in driving school. That's why the texting and danger, the texting and driving is so dangerous because you're looking down, you're not looking at the road, and you can tend to start veering. They taught this to me when I was taking my motorcycle class. When you're driving your when you're riding your motorcycle and you want to make a specific turn or get to a certain place, you look at it and your body just naturally steers to it. We go where we look. And so when we refocus our eyes and our gaze on Sundays, it's, it's really a cycle. On Sundays, we, we focus on Jesus through our singing, among the other things that happen at the gathering. But we focus our eyes through Jesus on Jesus through our singing, and that helps us to keep going during the week, and we keep going during the week so that we can make it to Sunday to be encouraged again and to refocus on Jesus. And we refocus on Jesus on Sundays and get a little encouragement in our tank so that we can keep going through the week, and we keep going through the week so that we can make it to Sunday, and, and on and on it goes. Because during the week, well, we get our focus pulled in so many different directions. Uh, sometimes we, can, we get distracted by the horizontal and we're looking at all these things around us, uh, much like Peter did with the waves crashing in when he began to walk on the water. And Sunday mornings when we sing gives us the opportunity to refocus our gaze on Jesus, to, to look again at the vertical. Uh, the song, When I Fear My Faith Will Fail, Christ Will Hold Me Fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path, for my love is often cold. He must hold me fast. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast, for my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. When we sing songs like this on Sunday, and I appreciate when James and the crew pick songs like this, it's a reminder to us on Sunday mornings when we sing to keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ. That the world around us is failing. Uh, the evil one would love nothing more than to get us off track and to put our focus and our gaze on anything around us besides Jesus Christ. 
But when we sing together on Sundays, we are reminded to focus solely on Him. So, when, when we sing, we obey God by singing His praises. We participate in worship. We're not just observers. We give and we get fuel for the week. And we renew and refocus our gaze on Jesus. All of this is happening during those moments when we're singing. And there's so much more that we didn't talk about. Singing matters. Singing is important. And not just to me, right? Like, of course, I'm going to talk about singing. I enjoy music. I, I play in the praise band sometimes here at the church. I've always enjoyed playing different instruments. Like, right, Joel's going to talk about it because he enjoys music. Uh, but if God saw fit to mention singing in the Bible as often as he did uh, and to command us to sing as often as he did, then God views it as important as well. Uh, and so when we sing... We are doing something that's very important, that is very valuable. We are singing praises directly to God who views that as a sweet aroma. We should look at our singing as something that's important. We should look at it with that mindset. It's not just something to kill time. It's not just something we do to, to check the box at the beginning of the service because we've always done it that way. There's reasons behind why we sing. Hopefully the last three weeks have given you a fresh look, a fresh perspective at why we sing. Pastor Andy will be back next week starting a new series. We'll hope to see you there. For now, we're going to share some God hunts.